Good morning. How's the family this morning? How about this weather in Texas? One minute it's 90, the next minute it's 50, and they said it was snowing out in Amarillo yesterday, so, man, I, that is crazy, isn't it? What did? Jackson Hole, 29 inches of snow. Ooh. You know, that is, uh, we go to Red River, New Mexico a whole lot, and we get on the webcam and look at what's going on because it's a live webcam. They had a ton of snow coming there yesterday, so it's pretty uh, pretty different, the weather here in Texas especially. Kind of like it split and went around all of us, though, didn't it? It kind of went different directions, and I'd say y'all keep the people in van in your prayer, and down in that East Texas area, they got hit pretty hard and a lot of lives lost down there. Really? Pretty, a lot of people got hit, yeah. It's pretty tough. I want to thank the band this morning. Thank Terry for uh, Nick's out and bringing this together. Good music. Thank Sharon. What a great, great song. You bet. You know, as I've done many times here at the church, and many of you that know me, I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to kind of slide off the trail a little bit, and uh, I just want to give you the full impact of today's message through a visual. I, I really like visuals because when you walk out of here, you walk out of here not just with the message, but you have a visual to tie that to. And sometimes that visual that I provide here, it might pop up from time to time in your household or when you're, when you're doing certain things or just walking through a store. Today might be that case, and you'll think of uh, that message at that time. So i got a couple of videos I want to play, and we're going to start with this first one. Ron, you got that for us? It is a, a YouTube video, and it's of a Transformer. This Transformer here is known, known as the Optimus Prime. And he's supposed to be the big boss of the group. Optimus Prime, he was the leader of these uh, Transformers, and uh, he, like I say, he was the big boss, and they were actually um, uh, going to battle, and by him leading everybody into battle, he had a lot of a, uh, quite a few of what I'd call soldiers at the time. Let's do the other video and reveal one of the soldiers. It's very popular with kids. It's, uh, y'all know who this is? This is Bumblebee. He was one of the main characters in the movie, and and one of the uh, soldiers for Optimus Prime. Thank you, Ron. Okay, you kind of got <laughs> you kind of got the gist of where, where we're going with this, and and I'm sure many of you have not been able to escape from knowing something about Transformers. 
If you have kids or you have grandkids or if you're at that age, you know something about the Transformers. You, you have most likely been exposed to it uh, through toys, through movies, through animation shows, through comic books, or even video games. That's how large this got. And the film Transformers is a 2007 American science fiction film. And uh, it's based on Transformers, which was a toy line created by Hasbro. That's how all this came about. And for me, the basic plot, and, and I had a hard time following this. In fact, these two guys sat in there and kind of gave me some a uh, little more information than what I had because I couldn't hardly follow where all this was going. So I, I guess to, to put it in a simple language that all of us might understand, it is about a war between a hero, heroic Autobots, that's what they were called at that time, and the evil Deceptions, am I saying that right? Both have the capability to disguise themselves by transforming into everyday machinery, primary vehicles, okay? So they could, they could infiltrate one another and not really know that they were there. When the guys started explaining this to me, what they were in a war and a battle about was a cube, and it was called an allspark. It was a, a, and this, this allspark, if you possess this cube, it would give you the power to become all your transformer, your soldiers, and everyone come together and be one powerful, powerful uh, entity that, that could conquer evil. But, of course, if the evil side got a hold of the cube, they had that same option. And as they were telling me this, they were talking about how that allowed them, whoever possessed the cube, or the auto, uh, what, all spark, it, it actually gave them power to grow stronger. And as I sat and talked about this this morning, I'm thinking, well, this all spark thing, kind of reminds me of our Holy Bible. You know, it's it's the same thing. If we possess God's Word through the Holy Bible and the Holy Spirit, then we become stronger. But if we lack that, Satan becomes stronger. You know, it's easy to be transformed. These two guys right here, both of these guys have been members of this church for a long time. And I've seen both of these guys transformed in their lives. Tate Townley. Charles Edwards, thank you guys, appreciate you. You know, it, it, I appreciate these guys so much because it's, it's probably tough enough for the pastor to get up here and act crazy, but when he asks somebody else to participate with him, it gets a little iffy there, you know, so... But they were willing, they, I caught these guys, they went out and visited with the older kids in uh, Children's Church, and I know that blessed their hearts too because they know all about this stuff. In fact, they could probably sit down and tell me a story I, I wouldn't even believe. And the reason I wanted to present this to you with a visual of a transformer this morning is that, once again, when you leave here, you will remember what it's like to be transformed. When you leave here, you'll remember everywhere you go. You walk through Walmart and you see them Transformer toys on the shelf, you're going to go, our crazy pastor preached on that one day. (laughs) You'll remember. Thank you, Lord. There you go. You know, a Transformer is a good visual because it shows us how one thing, one thing can become another thing. Real simple. And it can become bigger, better, and more useful than ever before. And we do this through Jesus Christ. When it comes to ourselves and our spirits, we should or we could think about ourselves as like little toy transformers. When we think of our spirit and all, we see each other all the time. Every Sunday especially, we get to see each other. We know each other's personalities. We know bits and pieces about each other's lives. Kind of like we kind of know each other. We may not know each other. You know, some of us know each other better than others. But we, we normally, if we're here every Sunday or we're around each other, we do know a little bit and a little piece of each other from time to time. And we know more about each other's lives. 
as, as that's exposed to us. I'm sure some of us reveal things that we had no idea about another person. The problem is, is we don't always see our capabilities. And we don't always see others' capabilities. We don't see the things that, are beco- that we're becoming when we follow Jesus Christ. We don't really see that as other people do. And that's kind of what happens in the transformation when you accept Christ. Things start to happen to you, and you may not even realize it. Because God didn't change you on the outside, it changes the heart. So you're starting to change things in your life. And believe it or not, friends that you've been around at that time are still around, and even friends you haven't seen in a long, long time, they see those capabilities, and they see those changes when you don't. God started His transformation the day you accepted Christ. God does the transforming, not us. And we become transformed the day we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? I have many friends, many, many friends that I know. They were a little rough around the edges. I could be one of them. A little rough around the edges before I came to know Jesus Christ. And some of these friends that have moved on and I haven't seen in a while, when I run into them from time to time, some of them are still on that same path. They haven't been changed at all. They no transformation in their life except they're still on that same path. But when they hear I'm a pastor, they can't believe it. They don't believe it. Because they knew the old reg, right? Some of you can witness that. You can say the same thing. Hey, I'm a different person. They don't know me. Even my own kids said, who are these people? Me and my wife. They done turned into holy rollers. Who are these people? But once God grabs hold of you, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You know, you run all you want to. Jonah ran. He wound up in the belly of a big fish. I'd like to caught that fish, you know. That. But he ran, but he didn't run far. Once God gets a hold of you, you don't get the opportunity to run away. You can try. But the circumstances after aren't always pleasant. And you know, I, I, I'm, I'm glad to know that my transformation, my wife's transformation in our lives and the things we started to do affected people around us. It actually, after all these years, changed our kids. All our kids are baptized believers in Jesus Christ and so are their grandkids. You know, it's all because we transformed our lives, or God did that for us, transformed our lives into something different. And I like it when we're around people and you're around people and you know that feeling when people go, I don't know what's happened to you, but I want what you got. You know, that's when you know God's got you. You're going nowhere. You're, you're, you're His. It says in the Bible, once He has you in your hand, nobody can snatch you out of there. So you're transformed and you, you just got to kind of go with the flow, right? You got to get in on it. You got to learn more about it. I know we're not really Transformers. I know that. We're not like Transformers in the movies, that is. We're not a toy for God. That's not what I'm trying to say here. We are real people. He made us real, and He made us the way we are. But He also gave us free will, and He gave us a choice. And with that choice, it's probably one of the biggest choices you could ever make in your life. And that's to choose Jesus Christ. But he doesn't force it on you at all. He gives you that choice. And once you accept him, then the transformation begins. You know, the people I've talked about that were rough around the edges and using myself as an example, I started to see things in a whole new light. I started to look at things differently than I did in the past. Before Jesus Christ, it was all about me. All about me. My wife will tell you that. You know, I was more concerned with me than anything else. But after Jesus Christ, I learned that it's not about me. It's about everyone else. That's a transformation I didn't think 
would happen with me. That's a transformation that people that knew me didn't see happening, even our kids. But God has a way to tra of transformation that overcomes anything you could ever imagine. He changes the heart. Some people go, well, I don't really want to be changed. I want to, I don't, I, you know, I like, the, I like how I am. I'll tell you this without a doubt. If you like how you are now and you don't know Jesus Christ, then you're going to love yourself when you know Jesus Christ. Amen? It's such a change. It's such an impact. Philippians 1 says, 6, it says, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Brother, he's not done with you yet. If you think you've been transformed already, hang on. He's not done yet. Some, some people refer us to like clay. God's always molding us. He's always shaping us. He's always making us stronger and better for His purpose, His will, not our own. I think a transformed life is probably one of the hardest things that I had to do was to go through a transformation. Many of you may know the story about the bald eagle. I've told this before. You know, when a bald eagle gets so old, its, its feathers get all matted. Its talons get all worn so they don't have any points on them. You know, he's really in a mess. He can't hardly walk, fly at all because his feathers are old and they're matted and his beak is all beat up and it's turned under. So he can't hardly eat. And he's got a choice. He can either transform or die. The choice. Do you know the eagle is smart enough to know this at that age? And he starts to pl pluck all his feathers out with the beak that he's barely got. And he starts to pluck all those out. And he starts to pull all his talons out and get rid of them. And he takes his beak and he beats it against rocks and destroys his beak. And that's because all of it's going to grow back. And it's going to grow back better, and it's going to grow back stronger because he knows how to transform. Many people didn't know that. I didn't know that. But that's remarkable that that happens, that the change can be made in anybody, anything. That's God's will. That's God's design for the eagle. So if God can help an eagle go through that, just think what he can do for us. You know, that is so remarkable. One question that is asked quite often, can God transform anyone? People ask me that a lot. Or can Basically, they say, can God change anyone? Yes, God can. Understanding that God doesn't change the outside, he changes the inside. He changes the heart. And the heart is connected to everything. It's connected to your emotions and how you see life and how you feel about things. When the Holy Spirit's in your heart, it is, it is such a wonderful feeling that it's hard to hold it in. You're wanting to share it with everyone. And, it, you know, if you don't stay in God's Word... And if you don't stay connected to the vine, which is Christ, then you can get a little lax on that. You can get further and further away from God. But I'm going to tell you once again, once God transforms you and He has you in your hand, His hand, nobody's going to snatch you out. Once again, you can run, you can try to hide, but that's not going to work. Because He will be after you constantly. Acts 9, turn with me there if you would. Uh, Acts 9, chapter 1. We're going to look at... a how God transferred a man named Saul. Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. It says, mean, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, 
Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Taurus named Saul, for he is praying in a vision. He, and it, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after seeking some food, he regained his strength. Sometimes, God has to get our attention. The transformation of Saul shocked so many people who knew him or had heard of him. They were shocked that now he was, instead of persecuting Jews and Christians and people, he was praising Jesus Christ. He was carrying God's word now. He's gone through a change. And... It shocked these people. They couldn't believe him. They, they didn't, you know, it's kind of like us when we meet those friends that haven't known us or seen us for a long time and we're walking in that Christian life and they see something different, but they, they don't really believe what they're seeing. They don't really believe what other people have told them about us, how God has gotten a hold of us and changed us. So let's pick up at, uh, in chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, we're going to pick up at verse 20. It says, Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All of those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. God got a hold of him. He said, you're going to be the tool that I'm going to use. I'm the one going to transform you in the man you are now. I'm going to transfer you, transform you into something bigger, better, and more powerful than ever before. And he did that. And he does that with us. We're no different. He does that with us also. Because we're all called to be disciples. Amen? And we know according to the Bible that, that Saul became Paul, which became one of the most powerful witnesses for Jesus Christ ever. Now how do you take someone that bitterly hates people using the name of Jesus Christ and get him on board? Well, he had to do some things to get his attention, amen? Which... I wouldn't think I'd want to go through something like that for him to get my attention. How many of you remember when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? How many of you can remember that? Great. Was it an emotional experience? Was for me. Was there a big change in your life or your lifestyle? Was for me. Probably many of you can agree. What did God do? Think about this. You don't have to speak this out, but think about this. What did God do to get your attention? 
Because there's something God did to bring you to turn and face Him. I know what He did with me. He took my dad from this world. And boy, was I mad about that. I was not happy about that at all. I stayed angry for over a year. Even though I was going to church, even though I went to church the very next week after we buried my dad, I was in church. But I was angry in church. But you know what? There was something that just kept tapping me in the back of the head. I got to know more about this. I got to know why all this went on. Why is all this happening? And learn to get rid of the anger I had. Now, now today, I realize what was going on. And I'm thankful, not angry. I'm thankful that God used my dad to get me to where I am today. Because I wouldn't be here otherwise, I'm sure. Unless he struck me blind and I'm, you know, I'm, whoa, hold on. I know I didn't want that. But God uses situations in our lives to get our attention. And when that transformation kicked in, and I knew what I needed to do, and I knew what God was calling me to do, I started running toward God. And you know, I looked over right beside me, and my wife was running right along with me. I knew this is where we needed to be. Did I want to do this? Did I want to be a pastor? Did I want to be involved in this? No. This wasn't me. I like me. But you know, I really didn't. I thought I liked me. I love me now. Because it's easy to do because Jesus Christ is in my heart. And He tells us that we should love ourselves and we should love our wives and we should love others. Sometimes that's tough, isn't it? But if you're living in a transformed life, it's not that difficult. There can be times that it can be, but all you have to do is talk to God. Take it to God. In those tough times, I had one of those this week. I mean, I had a just a total almost breakdown this week. There's that much going on in my life. And it's good stuff, kind of, <laughs> except for the little issues and the problems some of you may know about. But you know, I had somebody tell me it's going to be okay. Because all you have to do is remember, God's in control, not you. Sometimes we have a hard time dealing with that. Really hard time dealing with that. I would expect in your transformation that God did not rob you of one of your senses for three days and then restore you as he did Paul. I don't think we, much of us get that far along. Uh, you may have been a little sinner. You may have been a big sinner. Or you might have been a really big sinner. You could be any of those. But the day you accepted Jesus Christ, those sins were forgiven. And the transformation begun. I know you know what I'm talking about. If you are a Christian here today, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I guess my question today is, you know it, but are you sharing it? Are you, are you allowing God to make you bigger and stronger and using you to witness to others? As Christians, we all, every one of us, have a testimony. Every one of us. And God intends that you use that testimony to reveal your transformation by Him to leading a Christian life. He wants you to reveal that to someone else through your transformation. He doesn't ask you just to come here on Sunday mornings and listen to me he doesn't want you just doing that 
He wants you witnessing to others. He wants you sharing others in your testimony how your transformation took part and what He can do for you. Witnessing is very hard. Some people feel real uncomfortable with it. So you say, well, I really can't talk to anybody about that. You know, I feel real uncomfortable because I don't know Scripture very good. I don't know how to pray very good. So I feel very uncomfortable talking to somebody about that. Don't talk. Show them. Show them what Jesus Christ looks like. If you have those issues, be who you're supposed to be. Be who God made you to be. And if that transformation took place, let that reveal to everyone everywhere you go. If we look into the life of Paul and we really look deep in enough, we can find before the transformation, he was not a good guy at all. He had done and said a lot of terrible things. His life was not pretty. In modern terms, the best way to say that, we would say that Paul was carrying around a lot of baggage. You know, now being a transformed Christian, he's carrying around a lot of baggage. And all the negative things that he had done in his past made other Christians suspicious of him. They were suspicious of him, and they were suspicious of his motives now. Maybe, maybe he's like one of these transformer cars. He's trying to slide in there under a disguise and disrupt things. That's what they're thinking here. There's something not right about this guy. Many of us can relate to that, amen? Until they met him personally and heard his testimony, they could not be sure that he really received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And that he had changed completely and totally. They wanted to see him. Maybe this is also the way people saw you when you accepted Christ and started to tell others about the new life that you were walking in. Maybe they were skeptical also. I know some people were that way about me. They thought this was not going to last. That this new life that I was in, this Christianity thing, there was a motive, or that it would not last. They weren't real sure about it. They were skeptical. Maybe your friends or maybe people took the wait and see attitude about your transformation. Maybe they said, well, we'll just wait and see how long that lasts or how that works out. They wanted to see if the changes you say you made in your life were real. Are they? Are you reflecting them everywhere you go? They wanted you to show them, not tell them. If God did this for you, you show me that. And I don't mean just at church on Sunday morning. Show me around your kids. Show me around your grandkids. Show me around your work. Other people and friends you know. Show me that that change is there. Because if you're really transformed, you can do all that. You know, I know people that they're one way on Sunday mornings. They're one way when they're around their Christian friends. But the minute they slide away from them, they're somebody else. You want to know what's wrong with our society today? That right there. We're telling people what Jesus Christ is doing for us. We're telling them, even our kids, what they need to be doing, how they need to be acting, dragging them to church. And the minute we walk out, we act like solid running fools. I see it all the time. So what your kid think? You're a hypocrite. You know, there are enough people out there in the world right now calling people that go to church hypocrites. But when your own family starts seeing that, what are you doing? You're not living the life that God has created for you. And once you're transformed, you're only partially transformed. You could be one wheel out and one fender out and not be completely there. Are you totally transformed? That makes a difference. And you know what? It's not easy when you first start. It's not easy when you first become a Christian. You've got to grow. You've got to grow. You're not going to be there immediately. You're going to fall down. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do that when you've been a Christian forever. 
I'm, I have my mistakes, but I correct them in a hurry. And I run to God in a hurry in prayer and say, oops, I messed this one up. And I go back and fix it. Because I don't want somebody to say, hey, this thing you got going on, it's not real. It's just a part-time thing. You got a part-time gig going on here, Reg. I don't want that. I want to be who God made me all the time. And I want everybody to see that transformation all the time. And I'm sure many of you do. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation had come, the old has gone, the new is here. Amen. You are a new person in Christ. And all that baggage you're dragging around, it's gone. Give it to God. Let it go. I always say, everybody may not forgive you for everything you've ever done. But God forgives you when you come to Him for everything you've ever done. I'd like to close this message this morning. And of course, the screen's down. We're going to do it with a song. This particular song was a big part of my transformation. I could not find the version I wanted by Tommy Brandt, so we're going to use Delway. But I want to... I want to put this together for you so you kind of understand where I'm at. I was a new Christian in Ellis County Cowboy Church, still angry with God over what happened with my dad. But I started to be around other Christians, men that had been Christians for a long time, as Buster Bramwell will say, and I've always said about Buster, he not only talked to talk, he'll walk to walk. I ran into him and Tommy Taylor here and they began to witness to me. And they began to share things that God had done for them. And me looking at these guys and the way they were living, I knew right then I wanted what they had. But I wasn't sure how to get there. I wasn't sure that I'd ever get there. Then I ran into this gentleman named Tommy Brandt through Buster Brown. Many of you know Tommy Brandt. Travels all over the country singing, an evangelist and, and a preacher, and uh, man, he is the real deal. So I got invited to come out to Buster Bremel's house, and Tommy Brandt was there. I didn't know he was going to be there at the time, but we're in a big living room there at Buster Bremel's house. It's got this great echo in it, perfect for music. He probably designed it that way since he loves music so much. But Tommy Brandt, they asked him to sing and he took out his guitar, acoustic guitar, and he sang this song. And I knew God was talking to me. So I pray that through this song this morning, even though it's not Tommy Brand, it's Delway, that this song speaks straight to you. Give that to me, Ron. seen for some time will stop by and ask me where have I been what's on my mind they wonder why I'm not drinking and still painting this old town red Tell them I'm serving Jesus now And the old man is dead And the man you see before you May look a lot the same I may wear the same clothes and have the same old name but you're looking on the outside he 
If you could see inside instead You would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead to live such a wicked life I had no hope inside I was lost in darkness searching for the light then one night in a little church After hearing what the preacher said I gave my life to Jesus And the old man was dead And the man you see before you May look a lot the same I may wear the same clothes and have the same old name but you're looking on the outside if you could see inside instead You would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead You're looking on the outside If you could see inside instead You would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead When you leave here today, I hope you walk out of here and say, man, I saw some crazy stuff at church today. But I felt God. With that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today, and Father, we just give thanks. We give thanks for your love, your grace, and your mercy that you just pour out upon us. We thank you for the blessings and the favor you show in your church family and your church house. Father, we just pray that we're standing behind you, following you, not out front, trying to do our own thing. Father, I pray for that transformation for anyone here today, Father, that we can be a new person and that we can love ourselves and love others. Father, that the things we have in our past, all we have to do is give them to you. So I pray this morning, Father God, that what we did here this morning, Father God, that it reflected you in everything we did, even in the craziest things. And Father, I come to you today and I know there's someone here, Father, that just they don't know you that well. They, they, they haven't made that transformation yet. And if you're that person here today and you're, you're ready for that, you're ready for a new life, you're ready to get rid of all that baggage, would you pray with me this morning? You can pray silently, you can pray out loud, you pray however God affects you to do it. But pray with me like this. Father God, come into my heart. I know that I'm a sinner. Father, I accept you this morning as my Lord and Savior. Start the transformation in me and in my heart. And Father, I believe you sent your one and only Son to die on the cross to cover my sins and to eradicate all that baggage and all that sinful stuff I had in my life. 
And Father, starting today, starting right now today, I commit my life to you, to walking and talking and reflecting you and serving you in everything I do. And I asked all that this morning in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.